The man who said I'd rather be lucky than good saw deeply into life. People are afraid to face how great a part of life is dependent on luck. It's scary to think so much is out of one's control. There are moments in a match when the ball hits the top of the net, and for a split second it can either go forward or fall back. With a little luck it goes forward, and you win. Or maybe it doesn't, and you lose. In life, how much control do we truly have? Does our fate get determined by the efforts we place to direct it down the path we so choose? Or are our fates determined by a roll of the dice of luck? In the 2005 thriller Matchpoint, Woody Allen attempts to address the notion of luck in human lives and the vital role it plays in shaping our lives for better or worse. A director who entered stardom through his stand-up comedy in his earlier years, who then proceeded to create a number of successful movies which made audiences laugh and delight in self-depreciating humor. He continued to expand the style and significantly contributed, if not creating the genre of romantic comedy, which explores his key interest, human connections. Being one of the well-known American filmmakers that took inspiration from traditionally European themes regarding realism, morality, death, and suffering, he'd take influence from directors such as Igmar Bergman, Federico Fellini, and existential philosophers such as Albert Camus. With these influences present in his movies, which would encompass these themes but with a charm and humor commonly associated with American movies, his visual style on camera adopts master shots with dialogue heavy scripts that would have exceptional pacing with his norm not being close ups, but not fearing to break the tradition and attempt new styles if the need arises. His wide variety of films that encompass several genres all have one thing in common the human element. With each movie, Woody Allen tackles aspects of human existence with Matchpoint being his attempt at addressing the role luck plays in our lives. The movie follows the journey of the protagonist Chris, a former professional tennis player who takes on coaching, which leads him to becoming friends with Tom Hewitt and becoming romantically entangled with his sister Chloe. Soon after Tom invites Chris to attend a day party at his wealthy father's estate, Chris, feeling out of place, proceeds to walk around the mansion and walks into a concluding game of ping pong in which he meets Nola Rice, Tom's fiancée. In this scene, I'll analyze the subtle techniques Woody Allen uses to present this first encounter between the protagonist and the key female character of this movie. So, who's my next victim? You? I haven't played table tennis in quite a while. Would you like to play for a thousand pounds a game? What did I walk into? What did I walk into? It's like this. May I? Please. You have to lean in and hit through the ball. I was doing just fine until you showed up. Ah, oh, story of my life. So tell me, what's a beautiful young American ping pong player doing mingling amongst the British upper class? Did anyone ever tell you you play a very aggressive game? Did anyone ever tell you you very sensual lips? Extremely aggressive. I'm naturally competitive. Is it off-putting? I'll have to think about that for a while. Ah, <laughs> oh, there you are. I wanted to introduce you to Chris Wilton. Chris Wilton, this is Nola Rice, my fiance. Ah, so you're the tennis pro. 
Oh, you don't. My pleasure. He was trying to have his way with me over the table. Oh, really? Yeah, well, you better watch out for this one. He's made a living out of hustling. I'll be ready for you next time. I'll see you outside. Oh, yeah. Something. Let's examine the subtext that Alan imbues the scene and how his use of cinematography reinforces it. The first shot of the scene invokes the first shot of the movie. The game of ping pong triggering the audience's association between the similar shot and the statements regarding luck from the voiceover. This scene lacks music or ambient sound, choosing to instead encompass the actual sound within the scene, with the dialogue between the two characters being the focus the buildup of intimacy and sexual tension having the audience on edge. The camera work reflects this, with it quickly jumping between subsequent shots of Nolan and Chris, with Nola shot in a white sundress with a subtle golden hue with natural light emanating from the sunlight outdoors, in contrast to Chris who wears a black suit in a slightly darker side of the room. The camera breaks the 180 rule, cutting from one to another until Chris moves to advise Nola on her game. Where the closer these characters become in the scene, the camera returns to follow the 180 rule. Both characters are presented in a two-shot, with subsequent close-up shots being taken with a shallow focus that reinforces their closeness and chemistry on screen. The soft lighting coupled with the adherence to the golden rule presents both characters in attractive lighting. The subtle low angle shots used from Noah's perspective and high angle shots used from Chris's perspective representing the power dynamic in this interaction. The subtle facial expressions and eye contact between them coupled with the silence after every line building up the sexual tension between them, thickening until the cut with entrance of Tom, which is symbolized by the character returning to the wider two shot with the shallow focus returning to normal. This is used to symbolize the obstacle between Chris and Nola, which Tom's engagement to Nola, and later on Chris's marriage to Chloe, which prevents them from being together. Alan uses this tension and dynamic to create the desire within the audience, which mirrors the feelings that Chris has for Nola in the audience. So I'm trying to get in for money. There's no, you know, I like the girl and, you know, I want to move up in the world. It's a good stepping stone. He's sickly sweet, you know, just the character of Chris. He's really sadistic person, really sadistic person, because he knows what he's doing at all times. He's playing different characters, so he's trying not to mix up his his characters too much. I don't think he ever really gets to know who Chris is at any point. I don't think he ever lets anybody in. To what, he, to what he really is. This typecasting for the roles of Chris and Nola being ideal reflected in their performances, especially with Scarlett Johansson, whose beauty coupled with her strong sexuality, which we as an audience got hints of in our first scene upon her lighting of a cigarette, invoking the femme fatale archetype, hailing to the noir films at cinema. Nola's sort of a survivor in some way. She's, she's just trying to kind of make it and wants to, you know, whatever is is the best, you know, she just kind of wants to survive. She's come from, you know, this small town in Colorado and, and doesn't want any part of her past and she's just looking, you know, ahead at, at, at her future and the possibilities and, um, you know, there's a certain desperation in that kind of a, a character that's sort of unable to live in the moment but is always but wants more you know she always wants more and it ends up becoming you know a danger to her the dynamics between the characters and the casting choices helped convey each character accurately and go on to elaborate on the greater themes behind the movie the themes of desire for the control in a world that is ultimately chaotic and cannot be controlled Chris's attempts to both have an affair with Nola, while still being privy to the prestige and wealth from being married to Chloe. Nola's desire to secure Chris after falling in love with him, by refusing to abort their baby, and threatening to undo their marriage by telling Chloe of their affair, after seeing no future in her attempts at an acting career. And 
the attempts by the Hewitt family to buy over the affection of others by using their wealth and opportunities that they can provide. Each follow the themes of control and show how Alan ultimately tries to foreshadow the tragic nature of the story of desire, control, and luck, all in this one scene. Woody is probably the easiest director I've ever worked for. Because he, you know, he he doesn't put too much pressure on you, and you respect him to such an extent because of his former work and his own abilities as an actor, and to know that you're doing something right. But you know, very little direction. Just let us go off and do what we wanted to do, and if things weren't going quite in the right direction, he'd come in and he'd say, you know, maybe, uh, maybe this way. And you try it this way, and it's like, okay, we'll go the other. Way. The script came out good when I wrote it. The the Jonathan Reese Myers was available, just the kind of actor I needed for that role. Scarlett Johansson was available just when I needed her. Matthew Good was available. Brian Cox was available. Pen Pen uh, Penelope Wilton. I mean, it was just, it was just amazing. And every little detail, you know, was there for me. If I had to get into a museum or a restaurant. It was no problem in London. If I needed it to rain, it rained. If I needed it to be sunny out, it was sunny. I mean, uh, you know, I, I had such luck in making the picture. The picture's about luck, and I had great good luck making the picture. <laughs>